how frustrating was it to um, to miss most of the, the Leinster Championship? Yeah, look, yeah, I suppose hugely frustrating. It's something that I'm not really haven't been accustomed to over the last number of years. But look, it, it is what it is, and you just kind of make the most of the situation and work on different areas when 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 you are injured and uh, try and come back and make as big an impact as you possibly can. And uh, that's all I was looking to do. Just you know, obviously, it it is frustrating at times, but you just try and stay as positive and as patient as you possibly can and have that self-belief and confidence in yourself that you know when you're back you're going to make a big impact and uh, you know, we got 20 minutes against Mead and Leinster final and uh, managed to come on and kick a few points so um, onwards and upwards now you, were like, you look like a man possessed I have to say watching on from, from the sidelines you look like you really wanted to make an impact when you came on yeah look I just love playing for for Dublin and love putting on the jersey and, and playing in big games in, in, in Crow Park and Leinster Finals is obviously a huge game so you know I was, I was, I was mad keen to, to get onto the pitch and whether it was 20 minutes or, or 5 minutes I was looking to make as big an impact as I possibly could and uh, managed to get on the end of a, of a couple of moves and put the ball over the bar and uh, probably should have had a goal um, as well but uh, look that's certain an area to, to work on but uh, yeah just pleased with the impact and, and getting back on the pitch I personally thought it was great to see you going for that goal chance because so many lads you see these days fisting that one over the bar just to, to get the, the point at least but what's what's Jim Gavin like is he kind of you know would he kind of have a go then and say look you know maybe take your point and don't go for the goal in a situation like that. Ah, look, I think Jim is Jim has always trusted players on the pitch to make to make the right decisions, and uh, you know he backs each and every one of us to, to take the field and step over the white line. So he's not a manager who tell you what you should or shouldn't do. You know he gives you the the autonomy to go out and just make your own decisions on the pitch, and uh, you know to go out and just kind of play with that expression and freedom. So you know I thought the shot goal was the, the right thing to do. It was just a bit of poor execution, but uh, something to work on now going forward. Just get rid of that rustiness. Cormac Coslow uh, came in there and he was kicking over freeze to beat the band and he's been having a brilliant year. Um, like, would you look at him as a as a rival in the panel yourself? Ah, no, not not at all. Look, I think it's it's great. I mean, myself and Cormac would have practiced freeze together for the last number of years, and uh, it was great to see him, you know, kick so well in the in the Leinster Championship as well, which is, which is brilliant. You need that competition amongst the squad. Myself and Cormac obviously kick freeze. Paul Manning can kick freeze too. So you need you need options, and you need lots of you know lots of people able to kick the ball over the bar from from dead ball situations. So it's great to have that competition, and you need it in all areas of the panel, and and in particular then for free taking as well. So he's done brilliant, and you know if Cormac's kicking balls over the bar and score and Dublin are winning you know, that's, that's the main objective that's that's a big thing so I'm happy with that Yeah. And what happens then coming into the Super 8s then if you're both fit and you're both starting who takes over responsibility then yeah, look that's just something I suppose Jim has to has to decide both of us are obviously will be keen to kick, 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 kick free kicks and, and, and put the team in the best position to win the game but whatever the case may be is Will be and you know, we you know, there's only a certain amount of free kicks in the game. There's so much other plays you can be involved in and stuff like that. So it's it's something that obviously, you know, if the, if it does arise, that it's something that Jim will decide upon. But you know, it's it's nothing that either of us are really worried about. You know, you know, Dublin have had so many great forwards over the last couple of decades, going back to the early two thousands, and you know, you could go back further. But I'm just sort of taking that little um, snapshot. Is this the most competitive bunch of forwards? You think there's been in the Dublin panel over the last that spell? Yeah, look, I suppose it's it's, it's very hard to to compare to to, to other guys, cause just kind of you know. But it's it certainly is is usually competitive, and that's probably why we've been successful over the last number of years is that level of competition. And yeah, in particular to this year in comparison to last year, it's you know it's similar levels of of competition. You know, it's different players bring different things to to a, to a, to their skill set and to to the game plan as well. So, um, it's just trying to pick the, the the best six for a particular game game plan or against a particular team but uh, yeah that, that, that level of competition is brilliant it obviously mm-hmm. en- enables our defenders to come up against really good defenders both you know whether whatever six is up front and whatever back six is there as well it's, it's usually challenging and it's a, you know it's a great environment to be in I just wanted to ask you briefly about two really good GAA documentaries that were on over the last kind of eight months I'm sure you would have watched as a, as a GAA man yourself but the first one I thought was kind of you know it was interesting looking at Dublin's year ahead was the the players of the faithful one about Offaly beating Kerry back in in 82 and I was just wondering as a player yourself did you kind of look at that and think about maybe some of the mistakes that Kerry made along the way that year is that something that would have maybe struck a chord with you um uh, to be honest I didn't see it the documentary so I'll have to watch it back but um 
Yeah, no, look, I suppose we're banned from watching no, no talk no, of five year old. I don't know. It, it, it obviously just well, it wasn't in that night. I don't know. It was on the off season. I must have been elsewhere. But uh, yeah, no, it's just something that we're obviously very focused on our own game and uh, we don't compare ourselves to any other team. Um, but but certainly yeah, there's obviously learning in, in in different things. But we're we're just really focused on the the Super A campaign that we have ahead of us now, and um, where that takes us to, who knows? But uh, we're just really focused on obviously Cork release in the first game and getting this thing going and uh, getting huge momentum going throughout the Super Eight. This is a competition that we really enjoyed last year. Uh, enjoyed going on the road up to up to Oma as well. So it's uh, you know it's 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 the business end of the championship, and it's the time of year that everyone wants to be playing football. Did you see the Chase and Sherlock one? I did, yeah. I watched, yeah. I, I watched Jay's one. Yeah, Duck Jay was an incredible man and uh, he's done so much for, for Dublin GAA and, uh, you know, it was nice for him to, to get that recognition and to, for people to see his kind of life journey as well. Yeah, it was a great it was a great piece of film, I thought. And I think I was just struck as well by the fact that, you know, you know Jason winning that All-Ireland in 1995 and it was just barren then after that. And as a player, would you kind of look at that yourself and kind of... would? it even kind of ring home more the success you've had over the last number of years and that you might even cherish even that bit more when you see a great man like Jason Sherlock not able to follow up from 95. Yeah, look, we just see, we know how lucky we are as a group that, you know, we've got exceptionally talented bunch of guys but we've got a bunch of guys who are, are very driven and, and committed to becoming better footballers and then better people off the pitch as well so it's it's just a, it's a very special group and we understand the privilege that we have of, of, of representing the, the county of Dublin and putting on that Dublin jersey it's a it's a special thing and you know it's something that doesn't last forever like you know J.O. It's come and gone. My dad's come and gone. There's there's so many examples of great players who might may have only won a couple, one or maybe zero All Ireland. You know, but uh, look, we we understand how how lucky we are, and uh, we're just looking to, looking to, you know, create our own little bit of you know legacy, and uh, you know that's all we're doing and concentrate on at the moment. I know the uh, most of the Dublin footballers aren't really big on on social media, Twitter, and the like. I should, probably shouldn't be saying that in here, but. Um, the noise is getting more louder and louder every year. You know, I, I find, you know, there's people talking about Dublin's funding, Dublin's the advantage they have playing in Crow Park so many times, you know, stuff like getting your meals delivered to you, short trips to training compared to some of the, the, the players in rural parts of the country. How how does it feel for you when you when this noise just keeps getting louder and louder around all the success that you're having? Yeah, but I don't know. But it must be loud enough because I'm not hearing. I don't hear too much of it. Uh, like so I try and stay away from all kind of media outlets, whether it's newspapers, whether it's radio, whether it's whether it's Twitter. Try and just stay away from it. Obviously, you'd hear one or two back things back from family or friends, but you know it is what it is. People have opinions, and that's absolutely fine. You know what I mean? That's just the way society is. So, um, I've absolutely no problems with that. I'm just really concentrated on my job in hand as a player, trying to be the best player that I can for the Dublin team, and just you know maximizing my ability and, and capability for this team and if if that means that we're successful um so so be it but uh I don't try not to you know let myself get drawn into conversations about that thing and or, mm. or or would or, you be challenged or, or, about it maybe things? outside of you know if you're do you ever have people coming up to you and saying, "Look, you know, having these conversations with you"? No, the, the only conversation with people on the street coming up, just dubs who are just want, wishing you well and saying good luck for the year ahead, and, and you know that's really positive and that's kind of infectious and it's 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 really nice. So you know, but I've never had the opposite of, of different people coming in having a having a pop or anything like yeah. that. It's been it's always hugely positive and it's uh, it's nice to have that from the Dublin supporters. Yeah, because it seems to be even more players now, like from other counties, maybe saying that Dublin do have some advantages like do you feel that you have benefited from advantages over the last couple of years or you know is the the, the talent of player in the, the panel being overlooked a bit too much yeah look as I said we've got an extremely talented uh, group of players at the moment and uh, you know who knows? It could be the, the the most talented group of players within D- D- Dublin has ever produced. It's hard to really know, but uh, look, I just know that the level of work that guys put into it and the dedication that they put into it, and you know, I see it at first hand. You know, my my teammates inspire me to be better, um, and I think when you have that, you know, just the thing just grows and grows and snowballs, um, and it, it enables you to put yourself in the best position to be successful and to perform at a high level, and that's just what we're doing at the minute and it's a it's a very enjoyable environment and and set up to be evolved 
And just the, the last thing I'll ask you on this is just the Mike, Mike Quirk, I know wrote a piece in the Examiner saying that maybe, you know, there needs to be looked at in the GA where there's a pooling of sponsorship because obviously Dublin get a lot more sponsorship money than some of the other counties. Is that something do you think that needs to be looked at or do you feel that maybe that Dublin have kind of earned the sponsorship that they get and they shouldn't really be sharing with anybody else? Yeah, again, it's something that I don't really know enough about. Um, all I know is that through my own club in, in Ballymun, the, the Gaelic Games promotion officer Jerry Seaver would have won on 21 all, all Ireland with. He's obviously a play, paid by the Dublin County Board, but the amount of work that he does in the, the community of Ballymun is, is unbelievable. Like He's nurturing so many young boys and girls to play Gaelic football and, and ladies football. It's it, it's incredible. Like you know, When they could be going off doing different things that maybe he's not sport related um, you know he, he's a credit to the county board he's a credit to himself and his, his own club Ballybockle but then the things that he's doing in the local schools in Ballymun and the nursery is, is flying up in Ballymun it's 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 amazing, up there too you know, like, yeah. yeah it's, it's incredible yeah. so like that's just the only example that I can really comment on because I see it through my own club but yeah. what you know in terms of how that funding is being used and it's uh, you know it's going to help so many so many young boys and girls, you know, to pursue a, you know, I suppose a sport in Gaelic football, and maybe one day go out and represent Ballymun, obviously, and then Dublin. Just to ask you finally as well, because um, I know from being around at matches, and I often see your dad up in the stands and have a little chat maybe after some games. And I know you've said before that he he definitely takes a bit of a back seat when it comes to your own footballing career, and maybe the odd time might give you a bit of advice. What's what's the best bit of advice Barney's ever given you? It's a it's a, it's a tough one really. Um, I suppose Dad is just a very calm individual. He'd be I probably would have got my calmness from from him. Um, so like he just just tells me I suppose just to back myself and in, in, in all situations and you know he just reaffirms to me that you know you're a good footballer. You've done this in the past. You've done it all all your life. So when it comes to match day, just go out and perform it as best you can and and just be yourself. And uh, I suppose that's just the big the best advice that I've really got from anyone is just to be yourself out there and try not to be someone else or try not to do things that you're not able to do. You know you know you know your skills. You know your talents. So just go out and and and, and be the best Ian Rock that I that I can possibly be. And do you think you've done enough now to get a start? in the first Super 8s game after your performance against Meads or is Jim going to keep you keep you waiting on that bench ah, who knows really that, that's just we'll, 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 know in, we'll know in due course but as I said you're just trying to maximise any sort of minute you get on the pitch whether it's from the start whether it's from the bench um, look, we're, we're all just trying to you know, get, get, a, get our hand on a jersey but look if, if you don't get on the starting 15 you know when you do get called you just got to come on and make an impact and that's all I want that's all I want is the team to win and the team to perform and uh, you know if I can help in that way then that's great Dean appreciate your time thank you